and where you want by God. Thank you. So we're now climbing the hill of the North Frederick Street. This is named after the second son of King George III, and the second sons of the monarch are usually given the title the Duke of York. It's quite fitting that North Frederick Street in Glasgow is on one of our hills, as he is reputed to be the grand old Duke of York, who marched his 10,000 men to the top of a hill before he marched them back down again. The Rana just turning right onto Cathedral Street, heading for Glasgow's main cathedral. We don't have just the one cathedral here, we actually have four. As well as the St Mungo Cathedral you will see shortly, down by the River Clyde we have the St Andrews Roman Catholic Cathedral, and in the west end of the city we have St Luke's and St Mary's. These are Greek Orthodox and Episcopal. The St Mary's Cathedral was designed by George Gilbert Scott, who also designed I do hope he's enjoying passing his workplace or his study place without having to go in and do any work. Now, Strathclyde University is our second university. It got its Royal Charter in 1964, and previously on this site had been the Andersons Institute, dating back to 1797. Famous alumni from the Institute include John Logie Baird, the inventor of the television, and also David Livingston, the missionary and explorer. And we will see Livingston's statue shortly on Cathedral Square. You can see the spire of the large white fronted building with all the towers on top. This is Glasgow's Royal Infirmary. This is a teaching hospital. The hospital has been on this site since the 1790s. But this building you can see here dates back to 1914 and it was designed by the architect James. So the cathedral is just on our left and the statue of David Livingston is just beside him. Carrying out one of his miracles when he brought back to life the dead bird of his teacher since. Strathclyde University was Britain's first technological university and on this mural to our right you can see some professors and students carrying out some scientific work. Now we are now heading, as I said, for stop number three for the Merchant City and the Glasgow Police Museum. The Police Museum is a free entry attraction, but they do accept donations. So if you visit the Police Museum, please give them a few coppers. Now Glasgow's police force is actually the world's oldest. It dates back to the year 1800, and it predates the force in London by some 29 years. And I know we have a young lady from London on board today, and I did promise some comparisons. So at the moment, that's now Glasgow 1, London 0. It was part of a series of buildings, which was home to the town hall, and also a court and a jail. This is where public hangings would be carried out in medieval times and for lesser crimes the criminals would have their ears pinned to the door of the toll booth. This practice was known as lug pinning. Lug is a slang term for the ear. But just immediately on our right hand side here now we have the octagonal structure of the Mertic Cross. This denotes Glasgow's right to hold a map in Glasgow. The story of the Glickmans is that they were emigrating from Eastern Europe to America and when the ship docked in Glasgow the captain told them they had reached America and the family left the ship. They obviously liked what they found here though because the family still own and run the shop you will see shortly 120 years later. So you will see Glickman's, which is painted purple, just on our left hand side when we pass through this set of traffic lights. The weekend only market. It celebrates its centenary this year. 
1923, Maggie McIver and her husband rented out the wheelbarrows, or as we know them in Glasgow, the barras, to the local traders. We're now heading for stop number five for the People's Palace, for the Dalton Fountain, and for the Templeton's Business Centre. Very shortly, we are going to enter Glasgow Green. This is Britain's oldest public park. It was given to the people of Glasgow in 1451 by King James II. Now, between the Christmas Day 1745 and the 3rd of January 1746, Gordon Prince Charlie's troops were camped here. This was on their way north, where they met their ultimate defeat at the Battle of Culloden in April 1746. Representing South Africa, India, Canada and Australia. And behind the Dalton Fountain, the ornate building is the Templeton's Business Centre, now home to offices, apartments and the West Brewery. But originally, this was a carpet factory. The city would not allow a carpet factory to be built here on Glasgow Green until the company commissioned the architect William Liper. And this building over to our left is modelled on the Doge's Palace in Venice. When it was still a carpet factory, Templeton's produced carpets for the liner of the Titanic, for 10 Downing Street, for the White House, and for the coronation of Queen Elizabeth. Two years to build, and the local Presbyterian church took 17 years to build. St Andrew's Hall. Left, and also over to the left, the Riverside campus of the City College. The saying goes that Glasgow made the Clyde, and the Clyde made Glasgow. This is due to our trading and shipbuilding past. The river in Gaelic is known as the Clutha. And just coming up at the traffic lights on our right hand side, first you will see the beer garden and then the murals on the wall of the Clutha bar. This is the bar where the police helicopter crashed into the roof of the building in 2013, killing 10 people. And we will be turning right shortly, heading for stop six. And as we make the turn, our goals. Now just coming up on our left hand side of this set of traffic lights, the small black and white building is the Scotia Bar. This is one of our oldest pubs. It's been here since 1792. Billy Conley began his entertaining career as a member of the folk group The Humble Bums alongside Jerry Rafferty, who later had a massive hit with the song Baker Street. Now over to our left is the St. Enoch Shopping Centre with the glass roof, built on the site of the old St. Enoch Railway Station and Hotel, which were closed and demolished in the 1960s. The material from these buildings was... And for our Canadian visitors on board, to the right of the bus, you will see the number 31, on the side of the building. To the left of this we have a small supermarket. On the door of the supermarket is a plaque commemorating the birthplace of James McGill, who later founded the McGill University in Montreal. Now here we are at the junction with Trongate to the right and Argyll Street beginning on our left. This is one of our longest streets. It starts here and runs all the way out to stop number 16 at the Kelvin Grove Art Gallery and Museum. Now on our left at the moment we have the Marks and Spencer shop. Between 1759 and for a lady friend of his and Mrs. Agnes McElhose. The two corresponded for a time, but as she was a married lady they used code names as they did so. Her code name was Clarinda and his was Sylvander. 
Some of their correspondence is still held in the National Museum in Edinburgh. And for the ladies upstairs who are visiting the museum tomorrow, you can look out for the correspondence between Rabbi Burns and Nancy McElvoe. Now the building to our left was also designed by J.J. Burnett. Originally this was the Glasgow Savings Bank building. Ahead of us at the moment we have the Italian centre. Donald was born in the family home. Now the next building coming up on our left is the Corinthian building. Now home to bars and restaurants. Originally this was a court and jail designed by David Hamilton, known as the father of Glasgow architecture. In the 1820s, he redesigned the building directly ahead of the bus at the moment, which at one time was the mansion house of William Cunningham, one of Glasgow's tobacco lords. Unfortunately, Glasgow does have links to the slave trade. It's a part of their history that obviously we're not proud of, but it is a part of our history we do have to acknowledge. This building ahead of us over the years has been the Royal Exchange and also a bank building, but it's now home to the Gallery of Modern Art, which you do have to pay for. But in front of the building you can see the statue of the Duke of Wellington on his horse Copenhagen. You will have noticed the traffic cone on the Duke's head. This began as a drunken prank in the 1980s, and each time the City Council removed the cone, Within a few days, there's another one back up there again. And we're now heading for stop number seven for the Gallery of Modern Art and for Buchanan Street Shops. And if you look at the architecture of the four buildings to our right, first is the Counting House, previously the headquarters of the Bank of Scotland in Glasgow. Then the White Anchor Line building was home to the shipping company. The Red Citizen building was home to an evening newspaper and this grey building at the end was home to the Clydesdale Bank. And I always recommend if you're walking through the city centre is to pause and look up at the top of the buildings. Now we've just crossed over Buchanan Street. This forms part of the Golden Z of Glasgow shopping. It links with Argyll Street down to the left and Sucky Hall Street up to the right. And Glasgow is second in the UK only to, Lo to London 1. Also in Buchanan Street is Buchanan Street subway station. Glasgow has the world's third oldest underground railway system after London and Budapest. So that's now Glasgow 2, London 2. Now we are just turning left onto Renfield Street and on our right we have the Bank of Scotland building on the diagonal corner with the pillars. This was also designed by James Miller, who designed the Royal Infirmary building. And the Royal, the, sorry, the Bank of Scotland building, which we just passed, can be seen in one of the recent Batman films. But please don't ask me which one, because I've never watched any of them. Of Central Station. This is our biggest and busiest station. It opened here in 1879 with eight platforms. It's built on the site of the village of Grahamston and this village was demolished to make way for the railways. However, we do believe there are two buildings still surviving from Grahamston and the first is on our right hand side now, now home to the Rennie McIntosh Hotel. The other is round the corner to the right on our Girl Street and it's now home to the Grant Arms Pub. Now we are now heading for stop number eight for Glasgow Central Station and for the Radisson Blue. And stretching ahead of the bus also over to the right is Central Station. The roof of the station has 48,000 panes of glass. These were painted black during the Second World War in an attempt to foil any bombing raids on the city. And when the traffic lights change, we will turn left onto our girl street, heading for stop number eight. And as we do round the corner, if you look at the green facade of the Radisson Hotel on our left, this is a nod to the green roof of the cathedral back at stop number two, 
and it links the modern city with the ancient city. Issues to golf at any of our bus stops to press one of the red stop buttons which are located throughout the vehicle. Now we do have the Radis in blue on our left at the moment. It looks like they're either having a fire evacuation practice or something else going on in one of the other buildings in the area. In front of the Gallery of Modern Art. When the lights change, we will be entering Glasgow's International Financial Services District. Many banks and multinational companies have offices in the city. And you will see that as we head for stop number nine. When this bridge was under construction in the late 1960s, there was a bit of a gangland feud taking place in Glasgow. It's now in the 1990s, the bridge seriously was found to be sinking. Here in Glasgow, that was not a problem. We simply jacked the bridge up and carried out the repairs, while keeping the bridge above open at all times. And Now just at the end of the street here at the traffic lights, we have two further murals by Sam Bates, the Australian street artist known as Smug. And just coming up on our left hand side, we have his mural, The Generation Green. This is in reference to the COP26 climate change conference, which was held in Glasgow about a year and a half ago. On this one to the left, you can see the small child planting a wind turbine into the ground. Ahead of the bus at the moment, underneath the bridge, it will be on our left when we turn right shortly, is his mural of swimmers and divers. This right here, we have the river again on our left hand side. We're about to run along the Broomy Law, and it was here that Glaswegian would come back Now when we pass the brown building coming up on our left, as we head for stop 10 for the Hilton Garden Inn and the Radisson Red Hotels, ahead of us to the left you will see one of our more modern bridges. The bridge you will see in a moment was opened in 2006 and it's officially named the Clyde Arc Bridge. But here in Glasgow we do like nicknames. And this bridge, because it crosses the river at a slight angle, has the nickname of the Squinty Bridge. A squint is something which is not quite straight or set at 90 degrees. And the modern apartment block over on our left on the opposite bank of the river is said to be built to this design to resemble a cruise ship. This is a a nod to Glasgow and the Clyde's shipbuilding past. <coughs> Through the arch of the Squinty Bridge over to the left, you will see a brick round building with a dome the roof. This is the... In recent years, this has been used for charity events, such as a zip wire line to the opposite bank of the river. Now we're now heading into the Scottish Events Campus for stop number 11 for the Science Museum. We have two buildings worth pointing out in the Events Campus. Coming up on the right we have the Hydro Building and ahead of us it will be on our left very shortly the Clyde Auditorium. These were both designed by Sir Norman Foster. They both also have nicknames. The Clyde Auditorium, which is ahead of us, is the armadillo, as it resembles the South American mammal, but it's actually meant to represent five upturned ships 
holes. Another nod to our shipbuilding past. It was at the Armadillo that Susan Boyle made her debut. This is where she auditioned for Britain's Got Talent. And the Hydro Building is now coming up on our left as we get ready to leave the events campus. This is Glasgow's UFO or Spaceship. It's Scotland's largest indoor events arena and it can accommodate up to 14,000 people. When it first opened in 2013, the first concert given here was by Rod Stewart. And just last weekend, this is where Elton John played his last gigs at an indoor arena on his farewell tour. He does have one more gig to play this coming weekend at the Glastonbury Festival. Now just as we get ready to leave the events campus, you get good views over to we're now heading for stop 11A for the Clydeside Distillery, the first whis single malt whisky distillery in Glasgow for over 100 years. It opened in 2017. Now we will have the hydro on our left for a few moments, and coming up on the right, we have the car park for the event campus. This is the metal building full of holes to our right at the moment, this is Glasgow's cheese grater. Now the next set of buildings coming up to the left are the exhibition centre buildings. These were built in the 1980s on the site of the infilled Queen's Dock. As I said earlier on in the tour, the material for the infill came from the Sininup station and hotel in the city centre. Transfer Museum, another free entry museum. This was designed by Iraqi born British architect Zaha Hadid. It opened in 2011 and in 2013 it was named the European Museum of the Year. If you look at the unusual shape of the roof above the entrance, this is said to represent the coming together of the waves of the River Clyde which is behind the museum, and of the River Kelvin, which is behind the tree line ahead of us to the left at the moment. Now behind the museum itself is the tall ship, the Glen Lee. She was the last sail ship built on the... Yeah. As I said, we're going all the way along to the end of the street. And as we make our way round the roundabout, first it will be to our right and then our left, you will see a small island covered in trees and shrubs in the middle of the river. This small island and the opposite bank facing the island can be seen in the recent film 1917. Thank you. 